Hands Around the Library, Protecting Egypt's Treasured Books by Susan L. Roth and Karen Leggett Aburia. Collages by Susan L. Roth. Once upon a time, not a long time ago, many people in Egypt were sad and sometimes angry because they were not free to speak or vote as they wished or gather in groups. They knew about freedom, but only from books or the internet or whispering inside the safe walls of our Alexandria library. Egypt's young people decided it was finally time to let their voices be heard. And so they began to march in the streets. First, they marched in Cairo, but soon they marched in Alexandria too. They raised their voices and many others followed. I am a part of this story. I marched in Alexandria too. I was excited and hopeful, but I was also scared. In other parts of our city, some of the protesters had acted in anger. They had set fire to cars and to a police station. As we marched towards the library, I grew worried. What if they tried to burn it down? Our Alexandria Library, built on the ashes of the ancient, famous one, is the most beautiful modern building in all of Egypt. Our ancient Egyptian stories are kept alive here, in the books and in a carved stone and shimmering glass of the building itself. We were free inside the library, even when we were not free outside. We could not let our Alexandria Library burn. I was surrounded by the sounds of pounding feet and shouting voices. Maybe it was the noise of peaceful people demanding freedom. But maybe the people were so angry that they would hurt each other, hurt me, or hurt our library. Thousands of us were marching for freedom as if caught on a wave from the Mediterranean Sea. Dr. Ishmael Sarah Jeldon, the library director, saw us approaching. The library has no gates that can be locked, he called out. The doors are all glass. There is nothing that prevents anybody from destroying this building with all its treasures except the will of the people. The marchers pushed together closer and closer to the library. The crowd surged around me on the sidewalk, shouting and waving signs. We were in front of the library. We were on the library steps. The shouting grew louder. Then a young man broke from the marchers. He ran up the steps to Dr. Sarah Jeldon. And he took hold of the director's hand. A young girl followed. She took Dr. Sarah Jeldon's other hand. And then there were five, then six, then seven, then ten, all holding hands, protecting the library. Then I, too, broke into the chain that was stretching farther and farther, turning around the library, reaching toward the sea. When some of the marchers spread a huge Egyptian flag across the steps, people cried together, We love you, Egypt! A little boy held up another Egyptian flag. It was twice as tall as he was. He waved it right in front of Dr. Ishmael Sarah Jeldon. A smile crinkled the director's face as he spoke. Thank you for protecting our library with us. Go forth into the journey of your lives and create a better world. Thank you, he said, his voice catching a little. 
Thank you from the bottom of my heart. That day, the whole world heard his words and watched our Alexandria Library, our Bibliotheca Alexandrina, with all our people holding hands in the perfect circle surrounding it. And because together we all protected our Bibliotheca Alexandrina, once upon a time, not a long time ago, the library still stands today holding all of our stories. Left, young Egyptians break away from the march to hold hands around the library and its planetarium. Right, Egyptians of all ages and religions hold a giant national flag on the steps of the library. Library director Ishmael Sarah Jeldon gray jacket in the middle, waves to Egyptian marchers outside the library, while young children wave their own flags of support. Left. Former librarian, Shema Saad, in the children's library. Right. Young People's Library in Bibliotheca Alexandrina. Left. The slanted roof of the library allows sunlight to fill the space inside. Right, the granite wall outside the library displays hand-carved characters and letters from all cultures, alphabets, and eras. An architect from Norway designed the library to give visitors a feeling of openness and discovery on each floor. A wide highway separates the library from the Mediterranean Sea. The highway was solidly packed with marchers during the 18 days of protest before Hosni Mubarak resigned as president of Egypt. Alexandria then and now. Ancient library. The library protected by the Egyptian marchers is close to the place where there was an awesome ancient library. A king named Ptolemy wanted to collect all the knowledge of the world in one place. So he built the great library of Alexandria about 2,300 years ago. Ships coming to the port of Alexandria were ordered to give their scrolls to the library where they were then copied by scribes. The scrolls were made of papyrus a grass that grew easily along the Nile River in Egypt. From 300 BCE until 400 CE, the library was a center where great thinkers, scientists, mathematicians, and poets came to study and share ideas. There was even a zoo where scientists could study animals like crocodiles. No one knows for sure what happened to the ancient library. One story says the Roman Emperor, Julius Caesar, set fire to Egyptian ships in the harbor of Alexandria, and the wind carried the fire to the library. Other stories blame either Christian or Muslim leaders for burning books that did not agree with what they believed. Modern Library The new Bibliotheca Alexandrina with the same Latin name as the ancient library, opened in 2002. The sun was an important symbol in ancient Egypt, and the circle shape of the new building represents the sun shining on the world. All around the outside of the building are 4,000 blocks of granite from Aswan, a town on the Nile River in the south of Egypt. Each stone is carved with a letter or a sign from 500 different alphabets. The new library has seven floors above ground and four floors underground. There is a brand new planetarium, just like there was in the ancient library, but no zoo. The library already has more than a million books. There is a children's library with a special section for children with disabilities. 
there are classes in Arabic handwriting, map making, and playing ancient Egyptian musical instruments. Librarian Shema Saad says young people can read, chat, make friends, dream about the future, think creatively, talk, and discuss all about personal, political, and whatever issues are racing through their minds. In 2010, fourth graders in Alexandria, Egypt, Skyped on their computers with children in Alexandria, Virginia and Silver Spring, Maryland. They discovered that they wore the same jeans and t-shirts. They all ate pizza, liked many of the same singers, and even knew some of the same professional wrestlers. The January 25th, 2011 Revolution. On January 25th, 2011, Egyptians began marching in the streets in large numbers. First, in Tahir Square in Cairo. Tahir means liberation in Arabic. And then, in Alexandria and other cities. Many of the protests were organized by young people using Facebook and Twitter. They wanted Hosni Mubarak to resign as president of Egypt, a position he had held for 30 years. The protests began peacefully, but in the end, more than 800 people died. Hosni Mubarak resigned on February 11. Library director Ismail Sarah Jeldon closed the library during the protest, but he said that young people protected it from vandals by forming a ring around it. He said the library helped to spread the democratic ideas that Egyptians were marching for. In these 18 days that shook the world, men and women, young and old, Muslims and Christians, rich and poor, came together as never before. A few words from the protest signs. Freedom. Egypt. One hand. The citizens. The revolution. Democracy.